What's up everyone, Subterranean here, and today we're going to learn how to make this lead. You've probably heard leads similar to this in a lot of modern dubstep songs made by artists like Virtual Riot and many others. So, we're going to start off by initializing the patch in Serum. And we're going to get rid of these external effects for now. We'll be using those later. So, we're going to start off with Oscillator A, and we'll be using a Pulse Width Modulated MG, which is under the Analog category. We're going to go to the Unison and increase it all the way to 16. Now let's play with the Detune and see if we get a nice sound out of it. I like it at 0.03, so we'll leave it on there. It's important to know that if you increase the detune too much on pulse with modulated oscillators, they'll have this sort of weird metallic sound that doesn't really work for leads like this. You could also experiment with some other oscillators to see if you get an interesting take on this lead, but I like the MG, so we'll leave it on there. Now let's play with the wavetable position to see if we get a good sound. Let's leave it on 12. I like that a lot. Now let's take our LFO1 and drag it on to the wavetable position. Let's set it to 82, so almost all the way. And we're going to go to the rate of our LFO1 and change it to 1 bar. And we're going to leave the mode on off, so it'll play the pattern while we're playing the notes and not re-trigger it. Now let's add an oscillator B, and we're going to use a basic saw wave. So let's go to Analog, Basic Shapes, and set our wavetable position to 2, so we've got a classic saw wave. Now let's increase the unison on oscillator B to 16, and we'll leave the detune in about the middle. About 24, 25 works really well. I like what we have so far, but it's a little bare, so let's add some effects to spice up the sound. The first effect we're going to add is a hyperdimension. Let's put the mix on 41, and that's literally all we have to do for the hyperdimension. We're not even going to touch the dimension side of things, we're just going to leave that off because it doesn't really work with this sound. Now let's add in a chorus. The chorus adds kind of a subtle effect to this sound. It doesn't really do too much, but I like the little bit it adds, so we're going to use it. Let's tweak with the mix knob and see what we get. About 34% is good. We're going to put the rate at about 0.09 Hz, so almost at default. And we're going to put delay 1 and 2 at about 0.3 milliseconds. We're going to leave the depth and feedback on the default, and let's put the LPF all the way up. Now we're going to add on a compressor, and we're going to make it a multiband compressor. And we're going to turn up the gain. Ten decibels is pretty good. Let's turn down the master so it doesn't clip. Now let's move the threshold slightly to the left. Minus 15.7 decibels works pretty well. So now we have our lead. It's still a little dry, so let's add some external effects. The first external effect we're going to add is an EQ8, and all we're going to do is cut off the low end because this is a high end lead and we don't want any low end bass interfering. About 300 hertz works well. And let's also increase the highs a little bit. About 6.59 kilohertz increased by 3.10 decibels seems to be good. Now let's add on a reverb. Some people might want to use Serum's stock reverb, but I prefer using Ableton's reverb as I think it sounds better and fits better for the lead. We're going to turn on low cut and leave high cut on for our input processing, and let's put it somewhere around the middle with kind of a narrow curve, like this. We'll turn off the chorus because it doesn't really do anything for the sound. And let's play with the dry wet and see what we get. We'll leave it on 28, and let's set the DK to about 2.41. Nice. 
And the last external effect we're going to add is a ping pong delay. We're going to leave this little filter curve the same, and we're going to leave it on 3. We're going to change the dry wet to be at about 24, and we're going to change the feedback to 51. And there we have our lead. You'll notice that some of the notes are clashing because of how I wrote the melody. To fix that, we're going to go to our voicing and turn on mono, and we're going to set the portamento to about 65 milliseconds. Now notes that play on top of each other will have this glide and pitch. But notes that don't play on top of each other will not glide and pitch. And there we have our lead. One small suggestion I have if you're writing melodies with leads similar to this is to add a lot of pitch bending in your melodies. You can see that I've done that with both the portamento on the synth and with the MIDI pitch bend I have, where it goes from down to up whenever a note like this plays. You can use this by dragging around the MIDI using these curves, or if you have a MIDI keyboard, you can play with the pitch bending knob on there and create some very natural sounding pitch bend curves. So. That was my tutorial, I hope you enjoyed it, in the description box you can download the Ableton project file and get this same melody and lead as well as the preset for you to tweak around with. Please like this video and leave a comment as it really helps us out, and please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already.